early. I'm two minutes early with my oh, high hair <laughs> because last week I was late and I determined that this week I would be on time. So welcome one, welcome all. No one needs to be here right now because the doors are opened earlier than they should be because we don't actually officially open. Hi, we don't actually officially open the pub until eight o'clock. So these are our secret moments. Hello, hello, hello. These are like, this is like lock-in, but before the pub doors open. So this is private time. <laughs> what am I drinking? What I'm always drinking. Barefoot, it's my regular diet. And frankly, the only way we're gonna get through this alive is by drinking together, don't you think? Susan, oh, <laughs> oh, Nevada County in California, where my whole heart belongs. So there's a lady on this chat, um, Newport, Rhode Island. Hello, there's a lady on this chat from California. And on my phone, I have a photo of her that I swore, and I would never break my word, that I would never, ever show another soul. And I never will. And I will never break, break trust. But damn it, if that photo doesn't make me laugh. Any time that I need a laugh, I look at that photo. <laughs> so hello, you have dates for me. In California, yes, I've been, actually a lot of people have been asking when am I coming back to the States and I will be coming. And thank you, my love. <laughs> and love you to, to everybody. Look at everybody being so kind. Thank you. Um, yes, this was given to me, gifted by you guys. Is it back to front or is it the right way around? Um, thank you so much. People are so kind. People turn up to my gigs on the road and they're like, here's some bottles of wine. Here's a glass. <laughs> Just like, go on, bird, keep going. You're doing OK. <sighs> Let's all breathe. <sighs> I just had to put mum right. Mum was on the wonk. I was like, oh, Mumsy, you're on the wonk. We must set you right. Um, as we're speaking, my loves, Mumsy is on a cruise. I know, with Dad. Mum and Dad, on a cruise. <laughs> on a cruise. So Daily Mail, it kills me. <laughs> Don't mind me just pouring myself a goldfish bowl size glass. I have so much to tell you to talk about with you. Hello from South Wales. Hello, barefoot, really? I know, my husband says the same. Cheap, that's me. I'm supposed to be a snob, I'm not. I love cheap. Um, had a bad day mentally. Looks like Ribena, that's what it tastes like. This is basically squash. I like to think of this as the equivalent of vaping, right? If you're a smoker, vaping's supposed to be good for you, right? Hold on, check that out, right? And uh, so like this is basically, I know, come on, tell me you don't want to just come up to me and feel my whole boobs. Look, self-soothing right there. This is what Lewis Capaldi needs. He talks about the stress of performing. All he needs is this, look. Anyone with ADHD would do brilliantly. Um, so yes, this is basically Ribena. I'm sure it's like good for me like Ribena because there was always that thing, wasn't there? Ribena was supposed to be good for you. So anyway, mm. Hello from the Irish, oh my God, Republic. Hello from York, Jesus Christ, we put Biden in Ireland. Who does that? Ireland's like really tense politically. The government isn't showing up at the moment because no bastard speaking to anyone. Everyone hates everyone. Sinn Féin hates everyone and DUP hates everyone and they all hate each other. And what does the world decide to do? I know. Let's put a guy who can't control his own sphincter in Ireland. Oh, that'll go well. Oh, Biden's face at the moment, people. It is, isn't it so tight? It is so tight. His eyes are literally like, like slitty slits. His eyeballs are like squeezing to cut because it's all being lifted. And then there's a video going round and people say it's a mask. It's not. It's because he's got his neck. They've taped his neck back as well, which I have to say I've thought of doing often. But they have taped his neck. Who does that? Who thinks it's a good idea to put Biden into Ireland? Asking for trouble, right? Um, 
what was I going to say to you apart from the fact my comments have stopped moving so I'm not missing out and saying hello hello Holland and Cheshire and everybody hey guys thank you you guys are just Wiltshire Bournemouth I'm so looking for I'm so genuinely cannot wait let me just give you a trailer for what's about to come no I'm not pregnant I dried up a long time ago I know the horror is real um in fact this is featuring two stories this evening I cannot wait to see everyone on the road I cannot wait to be on the road with you all and I'm so I don't know I'm just so grateful for everybody you know you can't even believe how how much I can't wait so let's talk um I think a lot of people are suffering at the moment because and I'm not saying it's because of the weather but like today the fact that it's grey again and pissing down again and cold again and we don't get to see the sun again. If you're feeling shitty, do not, like, blame yourself or try and find a cause to it, you know, or try and think, oh, what is it in my life? Why is my life so pointless? What am I even about? What am I doing? It's not you. Honestly, it's not you. You need to know about the tape. Ooh, I'll go, I would go and get it, but it'll take me, like, five minutes so next time we do Katie's Arms, I will bring the tape. I will show you what I'm talking about. I've never used it, but I was introduced to it by an American woman whose face was just like, but it's actually, it, it, on this woman, it works. But she actually, I'm getting off topic because I was talking about how this weather is screwing with us. She had shaved, like, so say here, no, not here, but here. So say here, look at my roots, oh my God. So here, so she had shaved like here, so that she attached tape, say here, and then you lift it and you stick it. So she stuck it into her hairline here. So essentially it was like, she always looked like that, but like loads better. <laughs> she didn't look like that. <laughs> but she, she'd she shaved special bits into her head to lift her face up. Yeah. What's going on in Manchester tomorrow? Ooh, Marathon. Marathon de Manchester and the British Heart Foundation are one of the key sponsors. Just saying, I might be there. Um, so many things to speak to you about. Let me ask you, do you know about female dogs? Did you know what happens to female dogs? Evening, cheers everybody. Welcome to the Katie's Arms, your pub. Say what you want, think what you want, be who you want, and don't give a shit about anything, really. That brings me to something funny Mark and I were talking about a minute ago. So, um, did you know about female dogs? Did you know that female dogs... This is going to make me sound like a full Joey Deacon, right? Like a full ta-ta, ta-ta, ta ta I didn't know. Yeah, that's why I got a male dog, you know. 669 at Tool Station. Um, I didn't know that female dogs... I didn't know. I didn't know. No one had ever told me. No one ever talked about it. No one I knew that had a dog ever talked about what happens with female dogs. Female dogs drip. Exactly. I mean, I'm a sort of woman thing. And until very recently, you know, I had that whole business going on. Never dealt with it personally. Shove more things up there than a friggin' flagpole has flags. There's been, there's more, more gone up there. There's more gone up that alleyway than you could possibly ever log. Honestly, if you were a logger, you would, I don't mean like a logger that chops down trees, but a lot has gone up here. I once had, um, do you see what happens? I, I so can't help but overshare. I once had a coil fitted. It was a terribly bad. I don't know what I was. I don't even know what I was thinking. Um, other than shit me, I'm not having another one of those kid things. I had a coil fitted, and because of the sort of bird I am, in a rush, I shoved. I was having some sort of bleeding situation and shoved other things up there. You know, half a bread roll, an extra extra large tampax. So I always use extra extra large because I can't be asked with the whole changing them or remembering situation. And if you're a guy here, you won't know this, but women will. If you shove up an extra, extra large, because frankly, you can't be asked with this whole pissing around to find the right size thing. I mean, fuck it, just bodge up a massive thing, right? 
shove up. Tampax the size of the tree up your vag. You don't have to deal with it all day. I know, it's unhygienic. And I know it can cause you to have some sort of vaginal meningitis, but I'm prepared to take that risk. But what it means is when you try and pull them out, you're literally like, <laughs> at times, depending on what's going on down there, if it's all flowing forth, you know, like the River Thames in full flow, gush. <laughs> it's fine. They just pop out like a dream. It's like, pop, plop, job done, next one up. But towards the end, when there's less gush, right? Oh, ever tried expanding foam? Wait a minute, 669 from Tool Station. <gasps> that could be the period answer we've all been waiting for. Just shove some foam up there. Don't do that. That is not doctor's advice. But if you have an extra, extra large tree trunk shoved up your foo -fa, and then you're towards the end where it's all getting a little bit here and there, maybe, maybe not. When you come to pull that thing out, oh, oh I tell you, it's like, eh, it's like, it's like, it's like a, it's like if the hooks into a fish's mouth, it's like the hooks in you are facing the wrong way and you're dragging, trying to drag this, everyone knows what I'm talking about. You're trying to drag this extra, extra large Tampax out because you couldn't be asked to change them like all the good women do. Oh yeah, I buy a small for the last two days. I buy large for this day, small for this day, extra small for this day, a helper you selfie and then I have pads the rest of the time. Real women don't do that shit. We just bosh in, exactly, when it's so dry, you're just like, <coughs> and you, there's times I've honestly thought, oh my God, like, is that part of my intestines, like stuck to the end of it? Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, oh. and then you think that your intestines are just going, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm demonstrating this. <laughs> you feel like your intestines go, oh, 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 oh. too much information. Is that too much information? Back to the topic. So my dogs, turns out female dogs do disgusting things on your kitchen floor like I was like is this like Hansel and Gretel follow the breadcrumbs like there was like drips of blood I was like maybe someone's captured one of my children and they're slightly bleeding and I have to follow the drips to the shed where I have my child hostage and they'll want like a hundred thousand pounds which they're not getting for a kid to be honest I've got three but it turns out it's my dogs so guess what this is the new wardrobing item for the lions. <laughs> this is the cutest. So it's the dog nappy. And it's just humiliating that we have to do this, but I cannot cope. And this is where the tail goes. <laughs> oh, it's like a Sam Smith thing, isn't it? If this was Sam Smith, he'd have this on his face with me with his tongue. Can I just say that this is a clean one? It hasn't actually had my dog's anus in here. <laughs> Did you see the video, Sam Smith? Is that erotic? I don't know. But anyway, if we weren't, yeah, I'm not sure how we digressed to um, Sam Smith anally licking someone. But this, this is the situation that's going on in the house right now. And the dogs wear these with their little tails out here. And when they're going around the carpets, and I'm not really, I'm not house proud, but I just, the drips. Control yourselves. Use a pad inside, then you change the pad, not the pants. Ooh, I was thinking about tampons. Can you use tampons on a dog? And then I was like, I, just, I legitimately had that thought. And then my next thought was, A, I would have to put it up there. And B, I'd have to get it back out. And then see if the RSPCA were involved, it would be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, well, I didn't want them dripping on my carpet. So I shove one of my extra, extra large tree trunks up there and I can't get it out. I'd be like that. My foot on the dog uh, trying to pull. The... <sighs> anyway, some fucker could have told me, yes, someone just said no tampons on dogs. I'm telling you, I knew, I knew. So because I was pissed off, with have another swig of wine exactly it's the shit i have to deal with <clears throat> because i was pissed off this morning because of the weather because i haven't seen sunshine i haven't been on the road for like five i haven't seen sunshine for like five months i don't even know 
I'm starting to wonder if I'm ever coming out of this. Oh, maybe I'm already in hell. It's just going to rain on me for the rest of my life. I just cannot cope. I just went down the pub and told the barmaid and she made me feel better. But look what Mark got me to cheer me up. <laughs> so when lovely Mark goes somewhere, the deal is he has to bring me back a bun because I love a bun. <laughs> oh, golly. Maybe I shouldn't do that with my... Oh, yeah, I think it shows. So I should, I love a bun. I particularly love a finger bun. <laughs> and I particularly used to love it when finger buns were 20p. Do you remember? Okay, I love it. So I like any kind of bun bun, proper bun. Finger bun, Chelsea bun, bun bun. Nothing fancy, nothing. I don't want any. Can I get a, you know, a flapjack made with soya and uh, curdled yak milk? Oh, piss off. I want a, I want a Greg's chunker. I want something that tastes like it's been scraped off the arse of a baker. Mm. And then I've had cheap icing. <laughs> maybe just about hit it, but maybe not. You know, I want someone making that bun who's a bit pissed off because they had to be up that early. Couldn't really be asked. I'd sort of made a bun. That's what I want. I don't want <laughs> cherry and almond Beep, 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 for three pounds twenty-five. Fuck right off. Anyway, Mark goes out, comes back. I'm not in the greatest mood because of the weather. A, it's the size of my face. Excellent. B, <laughs> it's called. Can you read that? Is this back to front for you, or is it real? It's called an ugly bun. An ug ugly bun, <laughs> because it's quite ugly, because no one there that makes them really gives a shit. They just sort of like <clears throat> flop it on. They won't care. And I think they do them for a pound. They're not expensive in the grand scheme of things. So Mark came back thinking he'd done great and he, and he left it on the table for me to find, which is like our idea of romance. And I was like, that's so funny. My husband's bought me an ugly bun, which I think was inferring that I need to remove my ugly face. <laughs> Okay, let's drink. Ah, everyone's laughing, thank God. Darlings, if we're laughing, we're winning. I'm thinking about things that I had to tell you. Yes, so my son is now at some ridiculous height. Hi, Flanders is here. Ah, oh, I want an ugly bun. I tell you, it's so good. Shall I open it and taste it so you can taste it? When I'm eating, <laughs> Stella, the dog that's dripping everywhere, Ugh. She does this right near me when I'm eating. <laughs> so that she can taste the air. <laughs> so if I eat my ugly bun now, if you guys go like that. <laughs> do you think you'll be able to taste it? <laughs> I think it's so funny. I think it's what fat people would do in a restaurant, right? If you're eating your meal and they're looking over to see what you got there. <laughs> Okay, stopping. So my son needs new shoes because his last shoes have fallen apart. But obviously he can't go to a shoe shop because, I don't know, shops don't really exist anymore and who goes shopping anymore. And frankly, I can't be asked either. Do you remember the days of going Clark shoe shopping with your kids? <laughs> my kids need new shoes. <laughs> what are you doing? I've blown my brains out because I prefer that to going to Clark's with kids. We're still Russell and Bromley. Oh, yeah. I am Come and try on these shoes for £50. I am Come here. Come and try on your prep shoes. Do you remember that? <sighs> Defo wearing vibrating pants. Me? I'm not, but what a great idea. So, long story short... This is my son's foot. Look at the size of the bastard. So I made him stand against the wall whilst I did other things. I wasn't getting involved in this because I'm too busy. Um, and this is his heel. And this is his... I mean, Jesus Christ. How... This... This... The person on the end... Hello, my loves. Hello, if you just joined. Where have you been? You missed such fun. Um, hold on, I'm flew through my hair. In the manner of Dolly Parton. Um, this, 
this, the thing on the end of this, the six foot two human on the end of this, came out my actual vagina. That's girl code. Did you know? Let me try this. <laughs> this is when we're speaking in girl code. So none of the, um, no guys on here can understand me right now because we're talking about periods. And those come out of your vagina. And last night we had sex using my vagina. But it was fine because I lay on my side and just had it from behind so I could stay asleep. This is the size of the foot of my child. There is an actual six foot person on top of this. Yeah, he's nine and a half or 10, size 10, age 14. But it turns out it works very efficiently because if you then measure from the tippy top of the toe to the heel, you get the size of the shoe if you just go online and buy it. And frankly, if it doesn't like them or they don't fit, mm, do I care? No. As far as I see it, my mothering duty is to provide shoes. If those shoes aren't to his taste now or he doesn't really like them, sort it out. I'm too old for this shit, right? So that's going on in the background. Other things I needed to tell you about. The problem is, Katie, when you say the quiet bit out loud. I do do that quite a lot, don't I? You know, fuck it. I'm so, you know, and what are you going to do? Not like me, fine. Someone messaged the other day to say, you know, I used to really like you. I used to really like you. I'm assuming they have this accent because it's the sort of accent that annoying people have. I used to really like you when you were like serious and did political stuff. I really like you. But this whole inebriated funny woman on the Katie's arms, that's just you letting yourself down. <laughs> Am I? Brilliant. <laughs> I'm happy about letting myself down because really I know who I am and I'm all right with it. So I'm just going to make a suggestion. If this isn't your cup of tea, do something like it else. Go and watch someone who is talking about politics. But at eight o'clock on a Friday night, I'm having a wine. Me and my mates here. My son is 15, six foot two and size, size 12 feet. I know. And all I can think every time I see my son is vagina. Because he came out of there. I mean, imagine trying to put your kid back in. I mean, that's probably a weird thought for most people. But I think about that. And I was like, what if someone said, right, OK, everybody, if you want your kids to survive, you've got to put them back in. It'd be, I mean, it would be, be like a massacre. Can we see the lions? Oh, um, well, A, they're drippy. Ooh. B, they're on the sofa, which they weren't ever supposed to be. And C, I took them out earlier. <gasps> oh, my God. I, I haven't told you this. So much to tell you. I took them out earlier for a run and they went properly mental. Like these dogs can, the lions can really cover ground now. Like they've had training and um, they go into a wood and they will always find the deer. Like there's tons of deer around at the moment. Everywhere you look, there's deer, 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 deer. The lions will find the deer, deer will come out. The lions haven't got a hope in hell of catching a deer. I don't know if you've ever seen a deer move, but if the lions do this, it's them running because that's what they look like from afar. Deer literally do this. Boing, boing, and off they go. Like the deer are like, yeah, whatever, fuck off. But they still run away because that's, you know, polite. If you're a deer, you have to look like you care, blah, blah, blah. blah. The lions come out, <clears throat> chase after this deer, and they're all going crazy. Fine. What have we got up the road? A fucking old guy with binos. Uh, and he's there to like watch the birds. <clears throat> what do they call them? Twitchers. For all the all the right reasons, right? <whistles> so he's there and I saw him and I thought, oh, old guy, uh, twitcher. And he's like <clears throat> watching the <clears throat> birds on his own in the middle of nowhere. And I see him swivel. <clears throat> so now he's got this bloody great big deer She's probably got babies everywhere. It's probably a terribly tragic event. I probably need to be reported to the RSPCA or whoever looks after deer. What the fuck? National Trust. And then behind the deer, these two idiot lions going, <coughs> knowing they'll never catch it, bleeding from the rear, you know. And then there's me. I'm telling you. These are, this is the story of my life. Now I've dropped my things I had to tell you. Hold on, I have to go and get them. started doing that thing you know <laughs> when you bend over <laughs> 
Right. What do I want to talk about now? Oh, what time is it? 2022. Got to check that you were guessing my height. Um, I am five foot eight. And then when I put heels on, I'm like five foot eleven. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty big. When I've, and when I've got my high hair on, hold on, there. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty big. Well, I'm kind of, you know, house brick on cocktail sticks. My legs just, it's not, this bit's tiny. Look, I don't even have a body. We know that. Report the twitcher to the RSPCA. So when we went past twitcher later with his binos, he went, those dogs can run. And I was like, yes, they can. And then he went, they were chasing the deer. But he waited till I was past him to say that. Like, oh, what were they? I didn't realise. Jerry Deacon. Oh, my God. Mark was telling me, lovely Mark, earlier, the nicknames they all had from each other at school. <laughs> Seriously. And, you know, Mark comes from the rough end of the, the track. So um, I will have to share those with you. One of them is really, really, in now's day, conventionally inappropriate. But back in the day, when we knew, right, Joey Deacon, exactly. Remember the nicknames? like So obviously Specky Four Eyes and the rest of it. <laughs> well, it happened because the conversation started. We quickly went down to the pub for a drink because we'd get out of the house for an hour just so we talked together. <laughs> this lady had on these shoes. And I said to her, and I was like, I was, um, oh, this is from Ted Baker, but it's so old. I can't. And then look, this is cream. And you can imagine what happens if I have to have like makeup on and this gets caught. So this gets caught in the makeup. It's a nightmare. So the lady in the pub, I was being really nice. And I said, <laughs> I said, I, oh, you, I love your trainers. Your trainers are really, really nice. And um, and she said, oh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. They're from Geox. And in my head, I was like, um, well, Geox, usually if you know Geox, it's kind of sensible. It's airwear, it, breathable soles. Right. And they do like some sensible shit, like sensible sandals, like older, some older ladies, but trendy will go in there. But Geox is fancy and like it's, um, you know, it's fancy and they do really nice things. But I said, because I meant they look so cool on you, I said, oh, you wouldn't know. <laughs> and lovely Mark told me after it sounded really rude because Geox is a good brand. And I was like, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I was really, I was trying, I was being like genuinely nice. <sighs> didn't work out. I've got some good news for you. So you have to choose because we're running out of time. Do you want good news or do you want childbirth news? <laughs> or I can try and do both, but I just don't know that we're going to make it. Hold on. Let me get my notebook. Here. Okay. Let me tell you briefly this good news because this is actually really important. And I've got to rush because I promised to let you go. Um, gollywogs. Bloody love a gollywog. Totally support the pub. And I intend to go and visit them because the woman's called Bernice. And I so hope she talks like that. I will take a video. I'll get sound for you guys. But I want her to sound like Bernice. I'm Bernice. And no one fucks with my gollywogs. You want to fuck with my gollywogs? You fuck with me first because I'm Bernice. <laughs> That's what I've decided she sounds like. She might not, but the story's better like that. Let me, tell, let me tell you these things. You might not care. I don't give a shit. I'm going to tell you anyway. If you want to come to a Blackpool... May and October, it's going to go off. I can't even imagine what's going to happen. I absolutely want to be arrested for being naked and having something shoved up my foof. I don't know. It's just, I've just got a vibe. We've now got, you're not even going to believe, a Blackpool accommodation code. I'm just going to say, this is not good because I shouldn't be saying it, but the guy who runs this accommodation is really hot. He's built like a beefcake. If he's watching this, this is mortifying, but I, I secretly love him. So we can get, if you're coming in May or you're coming in October, let's just say you're going to come in October, right? And bring someone, bring someone. We're going to get two nights in this hotel, which is dead nice. So sweet, sweet guys, sweet people, salt of the earth, supporters of all of us. Oh my God, if you're coming to Blackpool and you haven't got your accommodation, 
we can now get two nights for 150 quid using a promo code Hopkins underscore BP. Oh, oh, BP. <laughs> 150 quid is dinner, bed and breakfast. It's per person, but you get your room, you get your dinner, you get your bed and breakfast. Find someone to sleep with, it'll be fine. <laughs> and the code is Hopkins underscore BP. And all of the booking details, we'll stick it on Katie's arms. It's on Katie's arms under Blackpool. But all I'm saying is, what's the hotel like? I've been there. I've walked around it. I've been in the toilets. I've met some of the punters and they come back year after year. And the guy that runs it supports us like... He's with us and he's also built like a brick shit shed. Very exciting. Don't say it. But, but, but I'm not trying to flog hotel rooms. I'm not. But he's willing to give our people uh, hotel rooms, to prioritise our people, um, to put us all in the hotel together. I just, I just, I can't even. Come, let's, let's do it. What's it called? I don't know what it's called, but I've been in it and it's on the front. It's a hop and a skip from the pier. They do shit like if there's a lot of us in the hotel, they'll put a bus on. If you want something else to drink, you can get it. If you want to pay a certain amount to get extra booze, you can. Let me find out the detail, but I, I know now that we've got accommodation in Blackpool. It's dead cheap. The owner's a dreamboat. And um, it means that as we build this Blackpool thing, which I'm building to 2024, if you don't know, um, we will take over hotels in Blackpool. And my plan is to bring together everybody, everybody on our side, from anyone speaking, standy, stand in the park, speakeasies, anywhere. Let's bring everyone together and let's have a weekend that just reminds us why we're all about what we are. Let's have a weekend in Blackpool where we just are together and have the best time and don't have to pay too much money. Um, so that's the plan. Let me find out the details of the hotel. It is on katiesarms.com. Eee, running out of time. Um, or do email Mark, landlord at katiesarms.com. Email Mark anyway. Tell him that you love the ugly bun. Um, the Wirral is sold out, which I just, I can't even, it makes me emotional, you know that. Um, if you want to join the Wirral waitlist, Wirral waitlist. Join the Wirral waitlist. Hold on. <laughs> Blackpool is May and October, and we're holding the dates in 2024 um because 2024 is going to go off we're going to take over blackpool uh wirral is sold out if you want to be added to the wirral waitlist please email landlord which is lovely mark at katiesarms.com and just put wirral in the subject line because we're looking at saturday september 16th so we want to add another date for the wirral because we've got loads of people who want to come so do that and then my last brilliant brilliant bit of a bit of news the wine's not nearly out look if your wine's nearly out, yes, come, just come. And please, please, I just wanted to say this. Um, if you're coming alone, don't even give it a second thought. Don't be like, oh, well, everyone in my family hates her and no one wants to come with me and I'll have to go alone. A hundred percent do that. Particularly if you're not that keen on your other half or like you've got a girlfriend or boyfriend and they're, like, they're not all that or a partner. Like loads of my gay... Uh, guys that come. One came with a partner last year, sacked him now, got a new one, and the other time brought his mother. Because when you come, you realise it doesn't matter if you came alone, because everyone in the room is just like, Whoosh! brings you in, buy you a drink, we'll wait for you, we'll help you in the toilets, we'll, whatever you need. As soon as you walk in, it's not, you're not on your own anyway, because it's all our people. Um, Perfleet. Perfleet is turning into a monster. Perfectly on the 6th of May. If you can come, just bloody well come. After the shitty weather we're having, we need it. But they're going to make it a cabaret night. And they're going to have like um, little cabaret tables. And so you can get your drinks and stuff served where you are. They're going to have a compare. And the lovely guy who's coming, um, he's, he's from the Royal Green Jackets. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I love him already. I think he's called Gary. He's going to come do some bit of singing, bit of comparing, and then I'll be up there doing this. I don't know, trying finding myself funny. So Perfleet. Overall, just are you coming to Perfleet? Oh my God, come! So so I don't care about the tickets. It's not about money. We're just trying to support venues, support lovely hotels, support people, um, support sound people, support anybody really. Um, 
and prove actually that no matter how much you cancel us, uh, like Stafford did, I'm so sorry, um, we're not going to go away and I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to take your shit and good people out there are going to come and you can keep cancelling all you want but we're going to keep coming back and when we come back we're going to come back bigger and better and I'm going to bring venues with us I'm going to get money for accommodations with us and anybody else who's struggling we're going to make a place where they can perform as well and that's what's going to happen so you cancel all you want fuckers because we're not going away anytime soon so listen um I don't know what to say, but thank you. You know, if I start to thank you, uh, I'll lose it uh, because I always do. Um, So I have to stop there. But um, thank you so much. Um, Don't get a female dog because it involves a lot level of shit. Do buy ugly buns. Buy yourself a finger tomorrow. You know, just finger yourself, you know, because you deserve it. And if you're feeling down, you're feeling fed up, or you're feeling low, give yourself a break. Just just don't be like, well, why am I feeling this bad? Why am I, why am I such a failure? Why am I not coping? It's all right. You've been in the dark for nine months. It's shit. Do something nice. Stand in the shower. Have an extra long wee. Or oh, I have a whole wee story for next week. We'll have to hold that one. Do, do so, just give yourself a break. All the bastards out there pretending to be fine are the least fine of all. Give yourself a break. Come to Perfleet. Come to Blackpool. And I promise you, you'll feel better. <laughs> and I will see you uh, somewhere on the road. And if not, I'll see you back here um, same time next week uh, with much love from me. Uh, from Mumsy, from lovely Mark, and um, and keep doing what you do.